In this example, we're going to write a vectorized MATLAB function to compute the future worth of money. Let's say you invest an amount of money P, which is compounded annually. The future value of your money F at an interest rate I over a number of years N is given by this formula. We're going to code this formula into a custom MATLAB function without using loops. The problem says to make a function called future worth underscore vectorized, which has one output f. p, i, and n are three of the inputs from this formula, and the last input plot status is a toggle of a plot we can optionally generate within the function. Here's a semi-complete flowchart describing how the algorithm works. After we input the four values, we compute f using the formula and vectorization. We then decide if we're going to plot the values, and then we end the function. The flowchart is simple and you might think it's unnecessary, but making a flowchart for every problem is critical. Developing the logic is half the battle. Let's jump into MATLAB to code this. Okay, we're in MATLAB. Let's open a new function file. The function has one output f. It's called future worth underscore vectorized and accepts four inputs, p, i, n, and plot status. The first three inputs are parameters from the problem statement. The last input, plot status, is a toggle to tell the code whether to plot the results or not. Before you start coding anything, you should add comments describing the function's utility, syntax, and arguments. For the sake of time, I'll copy and paste some pre-written documentation, so pause the video if you want to copy everything since it's rather long. There are two variables of interest noted in the documentation. First n is a scalar representing the number of years. It is not a time vector. Plot status is a single number which will either be 1 or 0. If plot status equals 1, the code will produce a plot of f over time. Otherwise, the code won't plot anything. Let's save this file. When you save a function file, you need to make the file name the same as your function name. MATLAB automatically does that here, as we can see, so don't change anything. Okay, if you reread the problem statement, we need to calculate f from 1 to n, so let's start by making a variable which holds the values from 1 to n. This line makes a vector from 1 to n in increments of 1. We're using increments of 1 to stay consistent with compounding our money annually. Now we can code the compound interest formula. This dot caret is what vectorizes our code. We need the dot caret because we are exponentiating with respect to nn, which is a vector. Finally, we need to add the code to plot f versus nn. The code will only plot if the last input, plot status, equals 1. We can use an if statement in conjunction with the isEqual command to translate this decision into MATLAB code.
the isEqual commands compares plot status and the number 1 to each other. If they're equal, then the code here executes. You might notice that there's no else or else if statement, but this is okay because nothing happens if plot status does not equal 1. It's always a good idea to create a new figure using the figure command whenever you plot so you don't accidentally overwrite an existing plot. And don't forget your plot annotations such as your x and y labels, your title, and the units whenever necessary. That's it for this video. In the next video, we'll duplicate this function using loops instead of vectorization.